Hi everyone, welcome to a new video at Set News K Garage. I'm Patrick. Today I will talk about cleaning the Aztec double action airbrushes, which are the airbrushes I have used since my beginnings in modeling. I know this is a subject that will probably not be of interest to many people, but given the lack of detailed information on the internet about the subject, I think it's necessary to make a video so that my research can be useful to more users. I'm going to start by showing what types of airbrushes this guide applies to. Please forward to the next section if you're not interested in it. First up, we have the Aztec A430, which is the simplest of their double action airbrushes. It's the one with the black body, with the same shape as the rest of the A series and that has a trigger to control both the airflow and the amount of paint to throw. Aztec airbrushes originally came with a lifetime warranty, but they later reduced that warranty to just three years. They use a system of interchangeable nozzles that will allow us to have an airbrush with a needle from 0.3 to more than 1 mm. The air gets in through the intake they have in the back and is what allows us to paint properly. Apart from the A430, we can also find the A470. It's the same body system, with the exception that it has a rubber grip in the middle of it and a wheel on the back. This wheel allows us to move the stem that moves the needle in the nozzle forward or backwards so that we can use the airbrush as a single action with controlled paint flow. Both the A430 and the A470, and their variants such as the Contempo, have a resin body that's resistant to all types of thinners. Following the same line as the A470, we find the A480, which is the same in functionality as the previous one, but with a metallic and heavier body. As I was telling you a moment ago, here we can see the inner rod that moves the trigger and makes the needle inside the mouthpiece move at the same time. The main problem with this system is that, following the manufacturer's cleaning instructions, there might be remains of paint inside that are not completely clean, and with the use, and over time, they accumulate on the stem and eventually will cause it to clog. The way the manufacturer recommends its cleaning is by filling the cup with thinner, either lack of thinner, universal thinners, acetone, and emptying it to a container for this purpose. This may be fine to make color changes or nozzle changes during the airbrushing session, but it is not enough to have a correct maintenance of the device. As I have mentioned before, the lack of thorough cleaning will cause the stem to stick and we will not be able to pull the trigger back. In this section, I'm going to show you how I clean the airbrush thoroughly, well, not that thoroughly really, you'll see later. When we have finished painting with a color, the first thing I do is fill up the cup with thinner and with a thick brush, clean the walls as much as possible. Then I shoot the content of the cup into a suitable cleaning container until it's completely emptied. When everything has been emptied, I fill the cup with thinner a second time and repeat the process until everything is empty again. Now that we have run thinner through the entire paint system and have managed to remove most of it, and what remains will be very diluted, it is time to remove those remains. In my case, I use an ultrasonic cleaning machine, but similar cleaning can be achieved with kitchen paper and solvent. The only drawback is that it will take a little longer. We disassemble all the accessories. These are the cup, the plug and the nozzle. And using a container to keep everything under control, we completely disassemble the nozzle, leaving the needle, spring, paint body and air body. Don't, 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 don't. 
The spring is probably a little bit hard to remove. I get it out with the help of fine tip tweezers and a little perseverance. We introduce all these pieces into the small container and from there to a larger one filled with thin. In this case, I use nitrocellulose thinner or lack of thinner. You have to make sure that when you put the small container into the bigger one, it is completely full of thinner. I put the whole set in the ultrasonic machine, which I have half full of water, and we start it up for about 5 minutes. If there is old paint attached, we will increase that time to 15 to 20 minutes. The inside of the nozzle seat can be cleaned with a cotton swab. A little trick that I have come up with is to use cotton swabs with plastic body, and now you will see why. I moisten the swab in the thinner and introduce it inside. Without forcing too much, when removing the swab, we see that the interior shape of the receptacle has been made, with a small hole in the middle. This is where the plastic body of the swab comes in handy. Being a plastic tube, coincidentally, it matches quite well with the diameter of the stem, so we can make a hole in the middle to be able to surround it. When putting back the swab inside, we will also clean the body of the stem and the bottom of the receptacle. The rest we can clean as I show you. In case you do not have swabs with elastic body, there are fewer and fewer every day because they are replacing them with paper ones. Any applicator brush will also be useful. When the ultrasonics have finished, we fish all the parts we have sunk previously and we take them out. kitchen paper we will dry those parts. For the assembly of the nozzle it's simple. We introduce the spring in the receptacle and press it until we feel a small clack. That will indicate that the spring is correctly in place. We introduce the needle pressing slightly, not to damage the front seal, and we will introduce the assembly into the air body. You don't have to force it, it can only go one way. If you find a lot of resistance, Stop, turn it a little bit and try again. Once everything is assembled, we will save it for a new use. This is how the airbrush is perfectly clean after each painting session. However, it is advisable to carry out a thorough cleaning of the interior of the body of the airbrush. The airbrush warranty is lost the moment we open it. However, I think it's worth losing the warranty if we can solve the problem ourselves. In the A430 and the A470 model, the opening is very easy, since it is only fitted with pressure pins. The A480 has a couple of screws, so this assembly is extremely easy. We can use a tool to open the airbrush, but keep in mind that it can leave marks. We must make sure that the hand plugs are removed, or we will not be able to separate the halves. We separate the half, then leave the inside of the airbrush exposed.
here we can see all those lots and sockets inside. The structure and operation of the Aztec airbrushes are simple. air enters through the rear part which passes through a tube throttled by a valve that opens and closes with the action of pressing the trigger and causes the air to reach its front part through the lower part of the nozzle housing. The paint enters through one of the side connector sockets to the cup which enters through the rear part of the nozzle and when the trigger is pulled backwards the venturi effect causes the paint to come out. For cleaning we disassemble the parts that we don't need to clean. These are the air connection, which does not get dirty because it only has compressed air inside. The air valve, which should not get dirty unless paint enters from the trigger, in which case we will clean the same way as the rest of the parts. The double action regulation system. and the double action regulation system. We are left with the seat system of the nozzle, the inner stem and the trigger. The trigger does not usually get dirty either, so it will only have to be removed from the joint with the stem. To do this, we must place a finger to the upper part where there is a spring. We will pull the trigger until the stem retains is dislodged. As you can see, as I mentioned before, despite having cleaned following the manufacturer's instructions and using the swap method, there are still remains of paint in the stem and its housing. The buildup of those remains of paint will eventually cause the airbrush to clog up and stop working properly. The cleaning process is exactly the same as the previous one. With lacquer thinner and kitchen paper and swaps, we clean any remaining paint that may be on the parts. In addition to all the functional parts of the airbrush, we can also clean paint residue from the inside of the body. It won't make much of a difference, but it won't hurt either. of the body can be cleaned without problems with thinners as the rubber or the resin body will be damaged. toothbrush moistened in thinner, we can clean the rubbers better if you consider it appropriate. Once everything is clean, we only have to assemble all the parts again.
this was it for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Regards and see you next time.